I'm Dr. Carrie Horn, and you are listening to an excerpt from my book, A Soul Aligned, How God Heals His Creations. The title of this exercise is Children Are Cherished by God. You're going to need a journal and a pen. Children are cherished by God. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their, angel, their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. Matthew 18, 10. Whoever receives such one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. Mark 9, 37. When we receive a child, we are receiving a person who has nothing worldly to give us. They are a precious gift for whom we have been given authority to protect, cherish, and raise to God. When Christ returns in his glory, he will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat, and I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the evil fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or a sick or sick in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Matthew twenty five thirty four through 46. Children are not often cherished as they are. They are often pushed into being mature, adult, mature and adult-like instead of appreciated and cherished as children. For example, they love to talk, but they're not often given a place to share their ideas, wisdom, or feelings. They are treated as though their ideas, wisdom, or feelings are not valuable or true. Even though God knows all, he never treats us as though our suffering is trivial or our ideas are pathetic. He enjoys communion, communion with us, and he wants us to bring everything to him, our thoughts, feelings, and ideas. I often hear people imply that God does not care what we think, and that's not true. We simply need to bring ourselves appropriately. When we have done our personal accountability work to bring ourselves in stillness and reverence, then we can share our struggles and truly seek his perspective, wisdom, and ministry for growth, rather than seeking him for our own will to be accomplished based on our own understanding. I had an idea to purchase a commercial property for my business and I wanted a training center where I could influence the next generation of true Christian shepherds. I had some ideas about how that would look. However, God does not want us to limit our prayers or the plans he has for us. Thus, it would be different if I had said, Lord, please fulfill my will rather than Lord, I submit these ideas to you because I am responsible for having a vision and participating, but you know the plans you have for me and I want your will, not mine. Please build me and minister to me according to your will in me for your glory, not mine. God's plans for us are good and he provides His minist for his ministry. Thus, if we conform our will to that which he has spoken to us, we'll never have to wonder if he will provide. We can be certain that he will provide for the purpose for which he has set us apart. God is not linear or li a limited God. We do not know all that he has set us apart for in him. So let us not limit our prayers or his plans by seeking our own will and understanding. He reveals at the proper time. And it is usually a slow reveal as he tests our hearts and minds and builds us for his ministry. 
God has greater plans for us than we can imagine. Grab your journal and your pen. Answer the following questions from your inner child. In a spiritually healthy home, children learn that they are cherished by God because they are first cherished by their parents. They are listened to, appreciated, precious, accepted, and their thoughts, ideas, spirituality, and feelings are valued. What was your experience of being cherished as a child? How do you feel about the way that you were treated? How has the way that you were treated impacted your relationship with God? Write a letter from your inner parent acknowledging the way that you were treated, the feelings that you have expressed, and how this has affected your life and relationship with God. Help your inner child to understand what they were too little to understand back then. Help them to understand the true nature of God and the battle that they have been experiencing here on earth. Help them to know that you are here now and that you and God will never leave them. Write your commitment to your inner child regarding how you will demonstrate that you cherish them. Consider and answer the following questions from your inner child within your heart and spirit. God delights in his children. We were created for his good pleasure. What does this mean to you? How do you imagine God feels when his children turn from him? How do you imagine God feels when his children seek after false security and idols instead of him? Why does God cherish little children so much? If little children having nothing to give but their hearts are so greatly cherished by God, what can we understand about God's desire from us as his children? Take a moment to remember what you gave as a child and to feel the tenderness of who you were as a child. Perhaps you labored over a piece of art, holding in your your heart the excitement and joy of surprising someone you loved with this precious gift that was made from your heart. My daughter wrote me a poem when she was little and she incorporated all of my favorite colors I can just imagine the anticipation and tender love that poured from her heart as she created something so special for her mom. What do we have to offer God? Is it possible that we are cherished by God because of who he is rather than who we are? Is it possible that what is most important to God is that we follow his commands so that he can simply cherish us and show us who we are in him? How does God delight in us? Spend some time in communion with your father regarding the love that he has for you and who you are in him. Pray for his ministry to show you who you are in Christ. If you have enjoyed this reading, please be sure to check out the Heart Known series workbook that is used in conjunction with a soul aligned so that you can learn how to practically apply these principles for healing. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment below and ring the bell icon for more videos like this. Thank you for listening and God bless.